Hey, it's John from 3D Printing World, and today I wanted to show you these print and place collapsible swords I've been working on. So if you came to my table at Murph this year, you've probably seen uh, this collapsible sword I brought. I actually pulled this off the printer uh, right before I got in my car to leave for Murph this year. And um, it was pretty cool. Uh, what most people like about it when I brought it there was the, so the noise it makes. It's actually printed as one piece like this. Uh, so when the sword extends, you can hear the um, layer lines rubbing against each other before they catch because it, it works on a uh, taper so uh, that was one thing that uh, got people really liked was the noise it makes but before I talk about the swords I wanted to um, tell you how they came about because uh, it's actually an iteration of a few things it actually the sword started off leaving not out of a basket so uh, this basket, maybe you guys have seen, it uh, started as an old woodworking trick. It's where you cut uh, um, a spiral cut in at an angle. And since it's in at an angle, uh, it, the taper catches. And so this is printed like this, and, uh, but as one piece, but it forms a basket. The downside to this is if you turn it the other direction, that falls apart like a slinky. So I thought, you know, I have a 3D printer, I can do better than that. So, uh, so the next iteration was uh, what I call the optimized basket, which uh, is the same type of thing. It's printed like this, uh, and it also forms a basket. Uh, it's got some additional features that the other one doesn't have as well. Uh, but the coolest thing about it is when you turn it the other way, it catches itself. And uh, that's because there's overhangs. And uh, 45 degree overhangs so that it can't fall through it in that direction. Uh, so, you know, I thought, man, this is pretty neat. There's got to be something I can do with it. And my wife mentioned make a classical cup, camping cup. You know, they make these out of steel. So I thought I'd give that a try, and so the cup works great, it doesn't hold water, uh, but it's kind of a mix between both of those versions. As it extends, it catches on a taper, but it doesn't fall through this way because it has an overhang. So basically it tapers one direction and overhang the other direction, uh, cross between uh, the two baskets. Um, and then maybe a week or two before Murph, my daughter's like, Dad, you should make a sword out of that. So that's what I did, and that's how I arrived at the green sword. This isn't actually the first sword I made. I uh, actually made another version, uh, but it got destroyed when someone had a little bit too much fun at Murph. Uh, and it actually took me three prints to get to that because uh, the shells or the uh, the blades are only um, about 45 millimeters thick. They're designed to be two shells when printed. Uh, and the problem I was having was I didn't have coaster wipe turned on, which normally I don't use. And it works out great. But uh, in this instance, since there's only two shells, when you retract, there's nowhere uh, for that plastic to go. So if it forms any type of little blob, uh, then uh, you're... Um, segments will, will uh, um, fuse together and that's what happened to my first two prints I was about to give up and I thought I'd try shell, uh, um, coast and wipe and that ended up fixing that so I made the first green one for my son um, uh, what's also cool I should say is you know since it's printed in a place like this um, you can basically do whatever you want with the design as long as uh, you don't have any overhangs. 
so that's what I did here when I designed this. You can see this radius starts at 45 degrees. You know, there's no real big overhangs on it at all. Uh, there is, uh, it does need to bridge at the top. That's just flat on the interior. Uh, but that's no problem for most printers if you got decent cooling. Uh, so that was my first design. The next one, my daughter wanted a pirate sword. So I made her this pink sword here. And uh, same here, this is printed uh, vertical like this. There's no overhangs until you get here. It's a little tricky. You start encroaching that 45 degree angle. Um, but no problem. And uh, so next I thought, you know, I guess this is obvious, uh, uh, but I wanted to make a lightsaber. So um, I kind of, this one's modeled after Luke's lightsaber. I had to make uh, a couple changes to it um, so there was no overhang. So I had an angle here. And this is actually thicker than it would be on his actual lightsaber. And it might be a little bit longer, um, but I thought it turned out pretty good. Uh, the only problem was who ever seen a lightsaber with a silver blade, you know? So I figured I gotta come up with a way so I could print that in different colors. So that's what I did next. So this lightsaber actually has a green blade to it. And how I did that is I'm actually printing um, them separately and assembling them. So I put a thread a thread here and I put it here so you can't you can tell that it's threaded when it's together. And so this threads off and you could take uh, your light your blade out and it actually prints as three parts. Uh, the blade's actually five parts. So you pull this way and it locks together. And you go this way and they're actually separate segments. Uh, and they lock together on the taper. You could print these separately, but I print them all together, just like this, and then print these separate, and then uh, then they go together. This is actually compared to the first one. Uh, it's it's actually uh, a little bit longer because the uh, lightsaber is got a lot longer hilt than the sword really needs. So this actually has uh, seven segments in it. The lightsaber only has five. So I guess that's all for today. Um, I'm going to post these on my Thingiverse shortly. Uh, my plan is to post these three models as well as um, I'm going to post a uh, blank versions of each one, uh, the lightsaber and the sword hilt. Uh, that way, I know you guys can come up with some pretty cool designs. Just, I appreciate it if you uh, posted a remix because I want might want to make it too. Um, so that'd be really cool. And uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you have any prompts uh, doing them or has any suggestions for me to do something next. Um, and two, I just want to apologize. I know the sound quality isn't very good. I need to get a, a mic. It's on my list to get. It just, I don't really uh, record videos that often. So it's kind of hard to justify the cost. So uh, anyhow, I'm working on that and uh, hopefully make it better in the future. So anyhow, thanks for watching.